Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Breathing 101. We're going to be talking about nose breathing, breathing very slow, predominantly the Buteyko method. That's what we're going to be focusing on today. So why do we want to do this? Because if we do breathing properly, like breathing through your nose, which we're meant to, you're going to experience proper facial development, proper jaw development, especially if you're young, your kids maybe. You definitely want to get them on this breathing right away. Deeper oxygenation levels on a mitochondrial level. What does that mean? Deeper into the cell, so that means the oxygen is just not gonna be pulling on the plasma. It's actually gonna deliver into the cell, so you're actually gonna feel what it feels like to have proper oxygenation. So on top of that, it's also gonna shift us into a parasympathetic state if done correctly. And that's a relaxed state, we wanna be there. Most people are in a chronic state of stress, a chronic state of a sympathetic dominant state, so we don't wanna be there. Um, and then it's also gonna help with asthma, your sleep, your life, obviously your anxiety, depression, performance, both physically and mentally, and as well as your dental health. Very cool. Jaw structure. So if you mouth breathe, which is what we're not trying to do, you're gonna experience probably a forward neck posture, a retracted jaw, that's not good for facial development. Once Overbite, that's not, yeah. That's not good for jaw development as well, overbite. So that's the reason why there's a lot more details in this. I think we even have a blog post about this as well. Yeah, it's under our immune system blog post. Uh, we attach videos where Patrick McCowan talks about mm -hmm. a bit more in detail, the science, the studies, if you ever want to check that out. Nice, nice. All right, so how? How are we going to do this? I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. So the first thing you guys want to learn is stop breathing through your mouth, stop breathing through your chest, and stop breathing through your lower belly. So where do we breathe? you got to only breathe through our nose. So if you're working out, if you're working in a stress state, whatever, wherever, whenever, try to only breathe through your nose. Try to breathe through your upper belly. So at the same time, we also want to kind of suck our tummy in because that's going to push the air up and that's going to expand our ribcage. If you ever look at a dog or maybe a fish, they got gills, dogs got ribs, they expand when they breathe, their ribs expand. So we want to create space. That's where the mobility, the myofascial release is going to come in too. Especially with the Theracane, doing your abs. We go in a little bit more detail on our mobility guide. Go ahead, download that on ConsciousLift.com website. Just scroll to the bottom, it's right there. If you have problems downloading it and not receiving it, just shoot me an email or a DM on Instagram. And that contains not just pictures, but videos of us going through it in detail. Yes, and once again, guys, the more we can unlock here, and even here as well, the QL for lumbar, that's gonna create more space, so we can create more expansion, the more and better breathing, obviously. So, once again, going back to this, nose breathing only, don't breathe through your mouth, don't breathe through your lower belly, you gotta suck our tummy in. We gotta create rib expansion. Get as tall as you can. Very, very slow breaths. We're looking for two to six breaths per minute. That's roughly gonna be about 10 to 30 seconds each way. As in, if you're breathing in, start with 10 seconds. Breathing out, 10 seconds. Just a constant, steady flow of air. Here's the thing, guys. Though. You wanna feel a very cold, well, slightly colder air coming in and a slightly warmer air coming out. Barely moving the hairs on your nostrils, in your nostrils. Once again, talk about rib expansion and focus. So when you're doing this breathing, it's very, very important to focus because one, first of all, with any breathing, most people don't, aren't even aware of how they're breathing. When they're stressed, so when I'm at work, if I'm doing like some lead generation or we're talking to a client, I'll catch myself, I'll be mouth breathing, I'll be talking too much, talking too fast, I'll go back to my breath, Focus on it, slow it down a little bit, maybe do a controlled hold, which we're gonna talk about, and just bring that awareness back to the breath. So, when do we do this? Relaxed or a controlled hold? So the relaxed method, you can do this when you're lying down. I like to treat this as my meditation. I think it's yielded so many more benefits focusing on the breath rather than just focus on the stillness. You'll get a lot more benefits both physiologically and mentally, to be honest. So once again, relax, you can do this lying down, you can do this sitting up, um, just throughout the day while you're driving, working once again. And all we're trying to focus on is get a consistent flow of air, very slowly. Just keep that air very slowly, consistently coming in, going out. And then the other way to do this is to do a controlled hold. You can time it or you can count your steps. I really like the steps because it's just fun and it gives me a challenge. So for example, I'll go walk to my car. I'll hold my, I'll take a nice normal breath through the nose, through the belly, upper belly. 
and then I'll count how many steps I get until I reach my car. Right? After you exhale, right? Exactly. So I'll exhale completely. And then you won't breathe. And I'll start walking. One, two. I'll roughly get about 40 to 80 steps, depending on how deficient I am in CO2, right? Mm -hmm. So the key is to do this every day, maybe even multiple times a day. This is why we recommend walking three times a day, 10 to 15 minutes, and then combining the breath work with that. What are, other, what are other good times to do these breathing techniques? Uh, other times would be during workouts for the control hold. I mean, you can do it while you're walking, obviously, while you're sitting. You can do it timed. You can time yourself while you're lying down. I like to do that as well. So take your nice breath, maybe for like five minutes. Just get relaxed. Try to slow your breath as much as you can. And then time yourself. You're looking for at least 20 seconds. Anything less than 20 seconds, you're setting yourself up for heart disease, other diseases, mm -hmm. asthma, anything, right? Not good. The breath is very closely related to chronic illnesses, degenerative diseases. And any animals that are sick, they're breathing through their mouth. Exactly. Mm. If you're in a stressed state, you're gonna breathe through your mouth. And that's the only time you should really breathe through your mouth is if you're in a stressed state. And if you're breathing all the time, well, you're constantly in a stressed state. So once again, you can do a control hold, you can time it or you can count your steps. Both are really good. Or you can just do a relaxed one where I just like to lay in my bed maybe in the morning and then record for five minutes how, on average how many breaths I get per minute. My goal is try to get to one breath per minute. Very challenging, but once again, maybe start with two to six breaths per minute and then slowly get down to that, that uh, efficient breath. And what I mean by that is if you look at this line here, you want to be on a, a balance point. You want to be on the edge, slightly pushing discomfort. So you want a medium to heavy air hunger. You don't want too much air because it's going to put you in a stressed state. And you don't want too little too soon if you're not used to it because that's also going to put you in a stressed state. So once again, medium to heavy air hunger, slightly pushing discomfort. The only way you're going to be able to experience that is if you're focused and aware and concentrating on your breath and that's it. This is why I recommend starting with the relaxed state. Because when you're in that relaxed state, you're lying down, no distractions. Your focus should be only on maybe three things. And that's your breath coming in, coming out, and then where you're expanding the ribs. That's all I want you guys to focus on. So, we talked about the mobility, talked about how to do it. Uh, pretty much talked about everything. Why? Anything else you want to cover, Nathan? Real quick, just a recap maybe real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do a recap. Yeah, just going over the, the two main techniques, well, making sure you're aware. I would say the best time to do these techniques are if you find yourself stressed, say for instance, you get in a stressful situation, maybe do a breathing technique after, or if for those who have tough times going to bed, doing it 10 to 15 minutes before bed can help prime your body for sleep to get it into that rest, digest, repair state. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once again, guys, breathe through the nose, two to six breaths per minute, breathe through the upper abs, trying to get that rib expansion slow, very slow, the slower the better, but just make sure you're on that edge of slight discomfort. And that edge is what Nick's, talk about. Nick's talking about is after you exhale, you hold your breath until you get a medium to heavy air hunger. Mm -hmm. So you're holding your breath so you feel like you have to breathe in medium to heavy. And so how do you know when you're doing this right? you'll feel a bunch of different sensations, but the main one we've noticed with not only clients that happens every single time, but also us, is this feeling, one, of almost euphoria. It's almost like you're kind of high on life. It's very cool because you've never been truly oxygenated, right? But you also feel a surge of blood flow, especially in the legs. We find mm -hmm. that out with pretty much every client, especially for doing mobility trigger pointing. We'll get clients that say, oh my God, I can feel that so much more. It's intense, more, more painful, right? So, and it's another good point is how long can you go without breath really like three to four minutes yes how long can you go without water a little longer how long can you go without food so breathing is very overlooked in the fitness industry you know and for both of us we were doing a lot of two-hour workouts and breathing through the mouth a lot you expel a lot of co2 yep. so when you expel all that co2 it doesn't matter how much oxygen you're breathing in you're not going to deliver that oxygen into your cells, so you can't produce energy. Mm -hmm. And Patrick McDowan, fun fact, actually talks about uh, with the coronavirus that this is one of the number one ways to protect yourself from it and to build the immune system mm -hmm. as well, CO2 retention. 
All right, guys, so hopefully that was pretty clear. If you got any questions, we're gonna go into more detail on the description. Once again, if you got any questions, DM us, email us, nick at consciouslift.com or nathan at consciouslift.com. If you haven't already downloaded the mobility guide, consciouslift.com, scroll to the bottom. Check out our tools page, we've got all the products that we recommend, and check out our program too, the Foundational Fitness Program. Good stuff, all right guys, take care.